developed, especially those that use oxygen, uh, that have developed to protect them against toxic forms of oxygen. So oxygen can be toxic when it's in this free radical form. Um, and free radicals are something that just accidentally get produced as they're metabolizing oxygen. So um, we're going to draw this out on the board, but just as like a quick overview. Um, remember we said bacteria don't have mitochondria. So most of their ATP production is in their membranes because they don't have a mitochondria. For eukaryotes, everything's going on in the mitochondria. Most most of the respiration pathway is in the mitochondria. But bacteria, um, they'll go through glycolysis and Krebs cycle in their cytoplasm, but the electron transfer chain is going on in their plasma membrane. And in the plasma membrane, there's basically a bunch of proteins that sit in the membrane, and that's what's making the ATP. So we call them membrane-bound proteins. And we're going to draw this out on the board. They basically shuttle electrons from one to the next in order to make ATP. Um, and it's a lot of ATP that gets made here. So really, like, most of the ATP is made during this process called electron transport chain. Um, so electrons are passed from one protein to the next. They literally hop down the chain. Um, and the reason why that's going on is because as that process process is developing with the electrons kind of getting shuttled from one to the next to the next. Um, at the same time, positively charged hydrogens get pumped um, and they get built up on one side of the membrane and it forms what we call a gradient. A gradient is we get like this big difference. So on one side of the membrane we get all these positively charged hydrogens and the other side hardly any. So we kind of get this buildup, there's this buildup, we call it a gradient. And the energy from that gradient, the analogy we always use is like water um, on one side of a dam. It's kind of like stored up chemical energy. The um, energy from that gradient is eventually converted into ATP. So um, that's where we get our big ATP payout. Um, the reason why we're mentioning the electron transfer chain is because this is the place where those free radicals accidentally get made. So in lecture when I said, oh, these free radicals kind of pop up, um, I didn't really tell you like where they come from. They accidentally get made here, right at the membrane. So bacteria, they're using oxygen so quickly, the these free radicals get made. And if they want to live, they have to make enzymes like sod and catalase and peroxidase. Okay, so we're going to draw this out and you guys can uh, add your hydrogen peroxide. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out a little bacteria. I'm going to take like a section of the membrane and kind of like magnify it. And we're going to zoom in and focus in on where the um, electron transport chain. So this is the cell membrane. And I know I drew it as two lines, but technically my two lines are supposed to be little, the little phospholipids. <laughs> and this is where the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is a part of that respiration pathway. So fermentation does not include that. Like ferment during fermentation, they don't use the electron transport chain. Electron transfer chain is only used during that respiration pathway that we keep referring to. Um, and in that respiration pathway, we said it starts off with starts off with glycolysis, and then it moves to something called the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is a set of reactions. 
reactions. So it's not just one reaction, but it's a set of reactions, and it happens in the cytoplasm, not in the membrane. It happens in the fluid-filled kind of center of the bacteria. But what it does is Krebs produces two molecules that basically feed the chain here. So the out, what's coming out of Krebs is basically the molecules that feed this process. Uh, those two molecules, they always use acronyms for them. One's called NAD with an H, and the other one's called NAD. And these are two electron carriers. They carry electrons. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna cruise along to the membrane and they're gonna dump off their electrons here and feed the chain. So they dump off the NAD and the FAD, carry those electrons up and they release them here. So this is our chain. We said it's just called a chain. The only reason why is because there's basically a set of proteins, we call them carrier proteins. They sit in the membrane. All they do is they're waiting for those electrons to get dumped off. Then when they do get dumped off, they kind of jump down the chain, one to the other to the other. So the electrons kind of hop down the chain from one protein to the next protein to the next protein. And usually, usually the last molecule to pick up electrons at the end is oxygen. Oxygen is usually the last, the last molecule here. <laughs> But we know now from the nitrate test that it doesn't have to be oxygen here at the end. Sometimes it could be thiosulfate. Sometimes it can be nitrate. So that was kind of the focus of the other lab. But for this lab, we're saying, all right, for most of the organisms, though, that are using oxygen at the end, one of the problems that accidentally happens is one of the carriers here at the beginning in your lab manual actually says the name of it. It's called flavoprotein. Flavoprotein is, is the first carrier protein kind of right at the beginning. One of the things that accidentally happens is it dumps off the electron too early. Um, it's supposed to accept at the end, but if it's dumped off too early, and oxygen picks up that electron right away and becomes a free radical. And it's just something that accidentally happens, because oxygen is just sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting to accept electrons. So sometimes this will accidentally happen early on. These free radicals are not good. They're really unstable. They usually have an unpaired set of electrons. Electrons are supposed to come in pairs, but um, free radicals usually are, are missing that complete set of electrons, and it makes them really, really unstable. They're very toxic. They float around, and they cause a lot of damage. So much damage that usually it'll kill, kill our organisms. So bacteria have to get rid of this free radical. And of course, the whole point of this whole electron transfer chain, the reason why bacteria are bothering to do this is to make their ATP. This is how they get their ATP. So we talked about it on Tuesday, and everybody said glucose is like the starting point, but at the end, you end up with a lot of ATP, and it's a lot. You get 34 ATP from the electron transport chain. Okay, so we're saying um, for bacteria that are really mostly using oxygen, this is a problem because these free radicals are getting made. So it's gonna make the enzymes catalase to help protect itself. Um, before the catalase though, we said, well, it's usually a set of more than one enzymes. One is called SOD. We said SOD stands for super oxide dispute. And what the SOD's gonna do is SOD's gonna get rid of our original free radical made right there called super oxide free radical. It gets rid of it. Yeah, it will get rid of it. What it'll do is it'll combine it with hydrogen. 
and saw will convert it into the end products hydrogen peroxide and oxygen, normal oxygen, not the toxic form of oxygen. So that's good. We have the normal form of oxygen. Then we said in lecture though the problem is is H2O2 is what again? <laughs> this is hydrogen peroxide. peroxide, which is also quite toxic to bacteria. Bacteria can't have hydrogen peroxide around either. So it'll usually make another enzyme like catalase to protect itself against the, uh, uh, that first end product, the hydrogen peroxide. So it'll take the hydrogen peroxide um, and it'll convert it into totally harmless molecules at, at the end product. Um, water, which is fine. And again, just normal oxygen that's not a free radical. Um, this oxygen that gets made here is a gas. All right. So usually the two go together. You need SOD and then you also need catalase to help. Now the organism is fine. We finally end up with water and oxygen, which is totally, totally harmless. So what you guys are gonna do right now, it'll be pretty fast. You are gonna add hydrogen peroxide to your test tubes. Um, you don't have to wear gloves because it's just hydrogen peroxide. We're gonna add one dropper full to all three of your test tubes. So per test tube. And what makes this lab a little bit different is you guys are gonna add the starting material. You're actually adding the substrate Usually we never add the substrate to the experiment. Like you guys don't have to add phenylalanine to your phenylalanine slants, or you never have to add lysine to your lysine iron agar. It's already in there, it's already in the media. But on this one, the chemical is actually gonna be the starting material. You're gonna throw that in there. We're gonna see if your organisms can break it down and convert it into water and oxygen gas. Um, we don't need any like pH indicator or anything like that because we're still going to get the differential visual because you guys are going to see gas. So it should like look like champagne bubbles in there. We're still going to get the, the visual change with the gas and it's going to be a lot of gas so it's going to start fizzing like crazy, right? So that's gonna be the catalase production. And to help you out on your unknown, the last thing is we're saying, well, it's really the obligate aerobes. Obligate aerobes have to make a lot of catalase because they're using oxygen so much that that electron transport chain is just spewing out free radicals. Also faculty moves, right? They like to use oxygen too. So a lot of times they have to make catalase also and then micro aerophiles also. So the reason why this will be nice is because remember on Tuesday we have the facultative and the AO tolerance, they are lumped together. This lab separates them because facultatives will make catalase but AO tolerance will not. So you'll be able to use this to finally kind of split up and differentiate between facultatives and your tolerance. All right, so we have little vials of hydrogen peroxide. You just have to squeeze them on your test tubes. Pull out. 